，三、二、一，点火。Uh oh, China could achieve a breakthrough on the moon within just a few years. They've already completed a crewed lunar lander demo detailing their mission plans. Meanwhile, SpaceX and NASA remain on track with their own lunar goals. How ambitious was China's test, and how will SpaceX and NASA respond? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The United States was the undisputed victor of the original moon race in the 20th century, achieving the first human landing on the lunar surface in 1969 and completing six crewed missions before the program ended in 1972. More than half a century later, America finds itself once again at the forefront of a new lunar race. This time, led by NASA's Artemis program, with strong contributions from commercial partners such as SpaceX. But unlike the Cold War era, the United States was No longer facing the Soviet Union, instead, its primary challenger is China, a nation rapidly advancing its space capabilities and openly declaring its intention to send astronauts to the moon before the decade's end. China has set an ambitious goal to complete its first crewed lunar landing by 2030 and to establish a permanent base on the moon in the years that follow. This isn't a vague aspiration; it's a tightly coordinated plan involving simultaneous development of multiple critical systems, from launch vehicles to crewed spacecraft to lunar landers. And just days ago, China demonstrated one of the most significant milestones yet on the path to achieving it. On August 6th, the China National Space Administration released a video showcasing the landing and takeoff test of its Lanyue lunar lander. This is the spacecraft that will carry Chinese astronauts to the surface of the moon and bring them back to lunar orbit during their first crewed mission. The test took place on an elaborate ground-based structure, a framework of towering steel columns supporting a large red ring at its center. Cables extended from the ring to secure the lander, allowing engineers to simulate lunar gravity conditions while testing engine performance. During the demonstration, the Lanyue emitted a distinct plume of yellow-brown exhaust, likely from hypergolic propellants, which ignite on contact and are valued for their reliability in the vacuum of space, despite their high toxicity. The test sequence included. Firing two large main thrusters along with smaller side-mounted thrusters to mimic both the power descent to the moon's surface and the subsequent ascent back into orbit. In addition to live test footage, CNSA presented a detailed computer-generated animation illustrating how the Lanyue will operate during an actual mission. The animation depicted the lander's orbital approach, power descent, touchdown, surface operations, and ascent, matching the procedures demonstrated during the ground test. The agency declared the test a success, with CNSA watcher posting, "Congratulations! China achieves key milestone in moon exploration with successful landing and takeoff test of lunar lander, a first for the country on an extraterrestrial body." The Lanyue lander is part of a three-element architecture that includes China's new Long March 10 rocket and the Mengzhou crew spacecraft. The mission plan calls for two Long March 10 launches. The first will carry the crew aboard Mengzhou into lunar orbit, and the second will deliver the Lanyue lander to await their arrival. The astronauts will then transfer from Mengzhou into the Lanyue to send to the lunar surface for their mission, later to orbit to rejoin Mengzhou for the journey back to Earth. This mission profile bears similarities to NASA's Artemis plan. Which will see astronauts launched aboard the Orion spacecraft and transferred to a separate human landing system. In this case, SpaceX's Starship HLS for the final leg to the lunar surface. The key difference is that HLS integrates cargo, crew transport, and landing into a single vehicle, whereas China is using a more traditional two-vehicle approach, reminiscent of Apollo, though with modernized systems. Visually, the Lanyue features a horizontal configuration with horizontal configuration with four robust fixed landing legs designed for stability on the moon's uneven terrain. Solar panels on both the lander and the Mengzhou spacecraft will provide supplemental power for extended operations. The interface between the two spacecraft incorporates multiple docking motors for secure crew transfer in orbit. This recent test is not an isolated achievement, but part of a steady series of milestones in China's lunar program. Just two months earlier, the Mengzhou spacecraft completed an abort test to verify crew safety in the event of a launch emergency. That trial demonstrated successful capsule separation, parachute deployment, and a safe landing aided by an airbag system. And in a possible sign of accelerating timelines. Leaked images have emerged showing what appears to be a full-scale Long March 10 booster 
ready for static fire testing. The design features 21 YF-100K engines in the first stage, first stage, seven in the central core, and seven in each of the two side boosters, suggesting that China's heavy lift capability is nearing operational status. China's progress in space exploration over the past two decades has been both deliberate and ambitious. It became the first nation to land a rover on the moon's far side in 2019, and in 2020, its Chang'e 5 mission is successfully returned lunar samples to Earth, the first such mission since the 70s. These accomplishments have laid the groundwork for even larger goals, including the planned International Lunar Research Station, which China aims to develop in partnership with Russia and other nations. This base, envisioned as a permanently crewed facility, would mark a historic leap in sustained human presence beyond Earth. From an engineering and program management perspective, China is advancing on all fronts. Rocket development, spacecraft testing, and lander design are progressing in parallel, ensuring that no single element becomes bottleneck for the mission. This integrated approach mirrors strategies used in the Apollo program and, more recently, by SpaceX in its rapid Starship iteration cycles. By building all major components in-house or through tightly controlled partnerships, China is ensuring both technological sovereignty and a streamlined development pipeline. For the U.S., these developments cannot be ignored. NASA's Artemis program is on track for a crewed lunar landing no earlier than 2027, with Starship HLS playing a central role. But technical delays, budgetary pressures, and the complexity of integrating multiple contractors could all pose risks to the schedule. Meanwhile, China's lunar program benefits from centralized decision-making, sustained political support, and a clear publicly stated deadline. In a competitive race where perception is as important as actual timelines, China's recent achievements signal that the U.S. is no longer running unopposed. The stakes in this new lunar competition extend beyond national pride. The moon offers strategic advantages for science, technology, and even geopolitical influence. From potential resources such as water ice and permanently shadowed craters to the possibility of using the moon as a staging ground for Mars missions, whoever establishes a long-term presence there will shape the future of human space exploration. For the U.S., maintaining leadership will require not just meeting Artemis deadlines, but also sustaining momentum through subsequent missions, infrastructure development, and partnerships with international allies. China's Lan Yue underscores that this is not a symbolic race. It is a serious, well-funded, and technically capable effort to challenge U.S. dominance in space. The successful demonstration of lunar landing and takeoff capabilities represents a major leap forward, bringing China one step closer to placing its astronauts on the moon for the first time. So the question remains, how concerned should the world be? On a scale of 1 to 5, is this a mild curiosity, a moderate challenge, or a genuine strategic rivalry? Given China's pace of achievement and its clearly defined end goals, many would argue it's edging toward the higher end of the scale. And as history has shown, in the race for the moon, the gap between almost ready and first to land can close much faster than expected. That's when we must look closely at what NASA and its partners, especially SpaceX, are doing. For now, the U.S. still maintains an edge over China in the new lunar race. Decades of experience from the continuous landings of the last century give the U.S. a head start, with its timelines for a crewed landing and moon-based cons construction still preceding China's plans. In terms of concrete progress, NASA has already completed Artemis 1, an uncrewed mission <clears throat> completed Artemis 1, an uncrewed mission that circled the moon. If all goes well, Artemis 2, following a similar trajectory but carrying astronauts, could launch as soon as early 2026. Preparations are already underway, with components for the space launch system in place and the crew undergoing tests aboard the Orion spacecraft. Yet, concerns remain especially over Artemis 3, the program's first planned crewed lunar landing. The Artemis roadmap is already behind schedule, with both Artemis 2 II and 3 delayed from their original timelines. Artemis 2's postponement stems from setbacks with SLS, Orion, and issues identified during Artemis 1. For 3, those same challenges persist, compounded by the ticking clock. Unless the SLS and Orion are fully ready in time, further slippage could be inevitable. NASA's SLS Orion 
NASA's SLS, Orion, and even the mobile launcher have long faced criticism for being costly, slow to develop, and plagued by design inefficiencies. Their long-term sustainability is uncertain, especially after appearing in proposed NASA budget cuts. Efforts to keep them alive are ongoing, but their future remains fragile. Then there's the most anticipated and arguably most uncertain part of Artemis III, SpaceX's HLS. Thus far, progress has been less convincing. A fully integrated prototype has yet to appear, and despite nine Starship flights, the vehicle has not demonstrated complete success in fundamental operations. Key capabilities essential to Artemis III, such as deploying payloads, reigniting engines in space, landing the second stage, and operating the orbital refueling system, remain unproven. Given this context, it's understandable why apprehension is mounting. The mission could be less than two years away, yet major technical milestones still lie ahead, and yet both NASA and SpaceX express strong confidence. Recent statements from interim NASA Administrator Sean Duffy and SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell assert that Starship HLS will be ready in time for Artemis III's current schedule. The optimism is not without basis. SpaceX has already completed elevator testing for HLS, and newly released images reveal the airlock area and crew cabin layout. While numerous challenges remain, each of them has already been identified through earlier test flights. SpaceX his task now is focused execution, solving known issues rather than discovering new ones. The timeline from late this year through Artemis 3's launch window could see a dramatic acceleration. SpaceX plans up to 25 Starship flights from Starbase next year alone, with continuous upgrades expanding both Starbase and Florida launch infrastructure. These developments combined with an increasingly refined vehicle design suggest a rapid march toward readiness. With tangible progress, it's progress in place and reassurances from one of the aerospace industry's most trusted leaders, Gwen Shotwell, there is still a reason to believe the U.S., through NASA and SpaceX, can return humans to the moon before China's first crewed attempt. And should Artemis III succeed, the advantage will extend beyond that historic landing. The U.S. would hold the initiative in the next phase of exploration, establishing a sustainable lunar base, positioning itself to lead this new era of human presence on the moon. The moon race, though still far from its climax, is already proven to be a compelling contest of ambition and capability. China continues to demonstrate a methodical approach, steadily advancing through each stage of preparation for its eventual crewed lunar mission. Yet the uncertainty remains, will they accelerate unexpectedly, perhaps even arriving ahead of schedule? This possibility keeps the pressure high on NASA and SpaceX. Confidence alone is not enough. They must act with greater speed and determination, turning plans into tangible progress. The years ahead will be decisive, as each side unveils bold and perhaps even audacious moves in pursuit of lunar glory. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.